as we talked about, here is the SF1008 Plus. So this is our temperature screening, mass detection, as well as facial recognition, palm verification, uh, PIN or password uh, verification, also card via weakened input. Uh, so this on its own is its own access control device. Uh, so like Larry had mentioned, the predecessor to this was an outdoor reader. So that was uh, IP68 and IK04. But when we added the temperature module to it, uh, it negated all that. So this is now an indoor reader. And this, is, this has all the trappings of a regular access control device. So it has your weakened input, your weakened output, uh, your normal open, normal close lock outputs, uh, your alarm output, as well as Rex input and auxiliary input, and your RJ45 to connect it back to our software. So right now I have this set for any type of verification plus body temperature, which I've set my threshold to 100.4 degrees. So now I'll just simply just come up and I'll verify the reader. Just like that, as you can see, it was able to verify my face. It measured my temperature, it was below the threshold, so therefore it granted me access, and it also opened our, our lock output, which I've wired to a green LED to it. And I'll do the same thing using my palm. So just like that, it verified my palm, asked for my temperature, and based on those factors being below the threshold, they granted me access and once again opened our lock output. Uh, so, so the pump comes in very handy for people who are a little wary about using facial recognition. Uh, you do still need to uh, present your, uh, your face in order to have the temperature detected, but your verification mode would be the palm and you would not need to enroll a face. So now I'll just demonstrate what would happen if someone would come in with a temperature above the threshold. So I'm gonna set it back down to 95 degrees present my face. And as you can see, even though it verified my face, it denied me access because my temperature was above that threshold. And what I did there is I also wired our alarm output to a red LED. That way, if people are interested in using it with access control and they just want to see if someone's coming into their building with a high temperature or what they consider to be a high temperature, you're able to get a visual uh, verification of that. Same with the, uh, the green LED. So now just for quick reference, uh, I can show you at any point you can turn on or off the temperature screening as well as the mass detection. And when you do that, it functions just like our pre its predecessor. So it just does its quick uh, face matching. Just like that, it's able to identify my face. And just like that, it can identify my palm as well. And with that, it can identify my face up to eight to 10 feet away. But once we turn the temperature screening on, you do need to be at least uh, 18 inches away from the reader. So now we'll go over a couple more settings that we have available in this menu and that this reader can do. So here we can, as you saw, you can manually set your high temperature alarm threshold. Uh, at any point, you can decide whether to deny access uh, based on the temperature being above, or if their temperature is above and you still want to allow access and get a report, you still can. We have our temperature units. So if you have any international customers, it can be switched to Celsius. We have our temperature measurement distance. Like I mentioned, it's currently set for far, and that's 18 inches away. And that's the optimal, uh, optimal distance you really want to be away from this. So that way, you don't have a user getting too close to the reader in case they sneeze or cough or, or breathe too heavily on it. Uh, you try and keep this reader as clean as possible and as contactless as possible. We also have a built-in temperature deviation correction. So this is for your points throughout the day when it may, uh, when, temp when temperature may be affected by say outdoors. So if someone is coming in from the in the morning and it's cooler outside, so their body temperature is a little lower, you can have it set here to add a few degrees to that to compensate for it. And same thing in the afternoon, if someone's coming in from being outside in the sun, their, temp their body temperature is a little warmer, you can have it subtract some, a couple degrees for that too. Another feature we have built in now uh, that's become quite popular is the mask detection. As you guys know, uh, pretty much you can't go anywhere now without wearing a mask. I know you can't walk into a grocery store without one. And especially for, and this was already the case, especially for places like restaurants, uh, food processing plants, anywhere that uh, 
where people are coming in contact with consumer products and they have to wear a mask. So we've added this function in. Now I'm just going to simply throw on my mask and show you how it works. I'll throw my mask on. I'll present myself to the reader. As you can see, it detects I'm wearing the mask. It verifies my face. And since my temperature is below that threshold, it grants me access. So now I'll do the same thing, but without the mask. So even though my temperature is below that threshold, it verifies my face, but I wasn't wearing my mask. So therefore, I wasn't following protocol, so it denied me access. Another question we get a lot is that, do I have to be enrolled on the reader? Do I need to be registered in the software in order for my temperature still be taken and it behave the same way? And the answer is no. By uh, being able to click here for unregistered people to access, we allow for anyone to coming into the building, visitors, customers, anyone off the street, to still be able to walk in, have their temperature scanned, and then have it perform the same functions. So an unregistered user, visitor can walk up with a normal temperature, they can be granted access, and with a high temperature, they would be denied access. We also have the capability of being able to, cap, to do a face capture of that person at that moment in time. That way, if you need to have any type of audit trails or contact tracing of where a person was at the point that they, uh, that they measured high or that they registered at the, at the reader, we're able to do that. And when we do that, we do include a privacy agreement. This is just letting the, the end user and the customer know that ZK Techo does not collect any data, therefore we do not share any data, we don't data mine, we don't have any type of cloud access that we, hit, that we can tap into to get databases or anything like that. All these devices are software, everything lives on your network and your servers, and we have absolutely zero access to it or any of the data on it. Unless, of course, there is some type of troubleshooting done by the integrator or dealer, and we need to remote in via team viewer session, but that's the only time we would have access to any data, and that would be with the customer's consent. So now I'll switch over here to our biosecurity software. So this is our biosecurity software. It's our enterprise, uh, enterprise level access control software which all of our devices connect to. So all our panels, uh, all our elevator control panels, our kiosks, if anyone has uh, Onvis compliant or any other type of camera, IP cameras, they can connect and monitor through here as well. And with the release of these readers, we've added a temperature management module. So with this temperature management module, uh, whether you have the captures enabled or not, you're able to see a real-time monitoring of what's going on. So obviously, if you have the captures enabled, you'll be able to see that person's face at that point in time. And you'll also be able to see any abnormal temperatures, any masks, anyone not wearing a mask when they should, will all show here in real-time monitoring. So if you have a guard uh, that's watching the screen, you can have them act on that. And also we do keep an, an audit trail of all our raw records, and these are all exportable and able to be saved onto the PC or anywhere they need to, the, the company needs to have it. So you'll be able to get all your raw records here, along with any type of pictures that were taken at that point, if that's enabled. You can also get uh, just the records of just the personnel. So you can see here, these are all my check-ins from the 19th alone. So if you need to just see all the check-ins for someone on a certain day, you're able to do that. And you can go as far back as you need to. Or if you just want to see any high temperatures, you're able to keep that here too as well. And you can even check by department. So another great feature we've built into this is the ability to do all the same configuration you just saw me do on the reader to be able to do it from the software itself. So here under the device tab, and if I go into select the device and go to set mask and temperature detection parameters, I'm able to do all those same configurations right from here. So I can enable my temperature screening choose to deny access based on that, change my threshold, do my deviation correction. Uh, all of everything you just saw me do on the reader, you can do from here. And this saves a lot of time. That way, if you have several of these deployed throughout a building or a campus or anything like that, you don't have to have one dedicated person to be running back and forth all day to do any changes. And for these, they can be customizable for each reader on its own. So you don't have to do all readers at the same time. 
uh, you can do each one with its own custom settings. We also have the ability to send out email alerts based on a high temperature or someone not wearing a mask. So all you have to do is just create your linkage here and you're able to get an email notification to whichever email you have set up to be able to get uh, the time, place, uh, temperature, whether they were wearing a mask or not, you're able to get that alert in real time on your phone. So another important thing I always like to throw out there is that when it comes to uh, temperature screening, we are not a medical device. We're not, we're not claiming to have any medical benefits. Uh, we don't provide the cure for COVID. We don't stop the spread of infectious diseases. All we simply do is just report that person's body temperature at that moment in time that they're presented at the reader. So just because someone comes in, it may be that there's a high temperature, doesn't necessarily mean that you know, they're sick, you have to call the emergency, uh, you don't have to take them to the emergency room, you don't have to you know, uh, call for an ambulance or anything like that. All we're suggesting is that, hey, according to the settings you set on this reader, this person's temperature is above that threshold. So after that, it's really up to that business to have something, some type of protocols in place for that. Uh, we kind of liken it to a metal detector. So if someone walks through the metal detector, it beeps, doesn't necessarily mean that person is carrying a knife or a gun or that they're a threat. Usually they would just, you know, step over and then they would be wanted by a security guard. And then based on their findings there, they would either be given access or denied access. Same thing with this. It's kind of like a first line of defense. Someone comes in with a high temperature. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have a nurse on site. There's going to be someone standing there with another thermometer. If you want to give them a couple minutes to cool cool off or warm up based on the outside temperature. Uh, that's all completely up to the business. A lot of businesses are going to have to have these in place now, and there's no one blanket uh, procedure that everyone is following. So everyone's kind of have to get their HR involved, their department heads as to how they want to tackle it. So that's another thing that's just something really important that we want to stress, uh, that we're not a medical device, no medical benefits just taking that person's temperature at that point in time. So that's about it. Uh, just, uh, again, want to give you a little bit of background, a reminder of the company behind the product, the evolution of the product. We want to be mindful of your time, which is why we really did focus on the product demonstration. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, Larry, uh, a quick question is the um, the log reports showing showing who came and went and their temperatures and things of that nature, are they re exportable? Yes, they can all be exported via CSV or Excel file. Yeah, this is no different than any other access control uh, product that we've uh, released in the last five or six years. These are all storing and matching templates. They're storing transactions. In addition to the transaction file now, of course, is the body temperature uh, reading. And then that data lives and breathes on that device. And then it's up to the end user whether or not they wish to uh, use our ZK biosecurity software for centralized management and the database uh, uh, housing. Thank you. Likewise, because you're using the ZK Biosecurity software, um, the same feature, we've always had video linkage. So if you wish, if you have on this compliant cameras, you can have the cameras pointed at a door. And then whenever there's an elevated body temperature, you could have linkage so that you could even have that video file embedded in the access control log. So you can absolutely use this in combination with surveillance cameras.